So these valves, because of the exposure to fuel, now it is good to have fuel touching the valves because it helps clean them. But if the fuel that you use is not good, it's low quality, you will still get deposits. This is Serena. She's a scientist at the Shell Technology Center located in Houston, Texas. I got to spend one full morning with her and ask her as many fuel related questions as I wanted. You see, growing up until now, I always thought that fuel is fuel and that it made zero difference which pump I stopped at to fill up. I'm sure I'm not alone. What's the cheapest and what's the closest gas station we can find is normally the determinant factors. Very rarely do we factor in the quality of fuel. Well, I'm here to tell you that the quality of premium fuel matters more than you think, and today I'm gonna try my best to explain why. First off, how did I end up at Shell's Technology Center and why me? Well, back in October of 2019, I was invited by Shell to attend a massive event hosted by BMW Car Club of America. And if you guys know me, if it's BMW related, I'm in. Well, that and the fact that such a big company reached out to me, it was an opportunity I really couldn't resist. One of the highlights of that trip was getting to drive one of my all time dream cars, the BMW E30 M3. Do you remember that video? Probably not, because for whatever reason, YouTube decided not to suggest that video as much and it didn't get that many views. Well, 13,000 views is quite a bit of people, but compared to my other videos, is relatively low. Anyways, while I was at the event, I noticed that nearly everyone there preferred to fuel up their BMW using Shell V-Power Nitro Plus. I'm not joking guys, these BMW Car Club of America members literally drove an extra 5 to 10 miles than they had to just to get to the closest Shell gas station. I was intrigued. Sure, Shell V-Power is the preferred fuel for BMW M cars, but that wasn't enough to convince me. I wanted to know more. I expressed interest to the Shell reps at the event. I told them I wanted to learn more about the technology used on Shell V-Power Nitro Plus, and no, I didn't want to hear a verbal explanation. I wanted to see live demos and experiments putting their premium fuel up against the competitors. And oh yeah, I wanted to ask one of their scientists some questions. Fast forward three months later and that's exactly what happened. I ended up in Houston, Texas with an appointment to take part in a private tour with a Shell scientist. Full disclosure, Shell did fly me out to Houston, Texas and they paid for my accommodations, but they did not pay me directly to make this video. They also didn't tell me what to say, what not to say. So everything you hear in this video is pretty much my own personal opinions from my experience and all my findings. Big shout out to Matt from Obsessed Garage. He was also there and man, did he have all the right questions to ask. We first started our tour in front of an engine that was split in half. The purpose of this demonstration is to show the amount of friction between the pistons and the cylinder walls. When it comes to motorsports or even daily driving, automakers always try to figure out how to minimize power loss due to friction. The two cylinders on the right represent a competitor's lower quality premium fuel and the two on the left represent Shell V-Power Nitro Plus which offers protection against wear and friction. So ideally there would be less friction operating the left cylinders. Well, I wanted to try this for myself. Yes, so Serena was saying that if you turn the wheel, so this is like the non-shell side right here. Yes. And you'd be able to tell the difference between just... Well, you can tell me. I, I, I don't want to okay. bias you, right? Of course. You, no, you try there different. and then you try this side. Okay. And you can go a little faster if you wish. Sure. The additive chemistry is such, imagine imagine the additive chemistry working on the surfaces, oh. right? Oh yeah, that's night yeah. and day. Night and day. That's at least so 50 working on, on the metallic the surfaces. Side. So you have microfilms that are really formed, you know, on the cylinder wall mm -hmm. and covering the uh, top part of the piston where the piston rings are. It's like it's like adding a cream to your hands, right? You say, oh, my hands are really rough. And you put this cream on and then you feel, oh, smooth, right? So it's exactly that. You see, the additives that Shell uses on their premium fuel leaves a thin film on the top portion of the cylinder walls that decreases friction caused by the pistons. Of course, we continued to ask Serena more about this process as it was very interesting. I mean, if you look at the uh, power losses, I mean, people have compiled, compiled all this information. So the power losses in an engine, a large chunk, about 15% of those losses are due to friction in the engine. And that's something that you you cannot do much mechanically to prevent. Correct. So uh, it has to be a combination between you know the the fuel and the and the lubricant, obviously. But the fuel component, the fuel comes in just working at the top piston ring. So the top part of the piston, that's where the fuel has a chance to, to help. And because you are injecting fuel into the engine constantly as you're driving, you know, you keep replenishing, you know, the components of the fuel. Because people say, yeah, but you burn it. Yes, it's true, you burn it, but you immediately, you know, you, this is a continuous cycle. You're injecting fuel and you're burning and injecting more, so. And for anyone that wondered what a BMW M straight six engine looks like when it's split in half, well, 
Here you go. So after messing around with the friction demo, we entered a room that featured several before and after experiments. Serena briefly talked about how a port injection engine works and explained the benefits of having the injector spray fuel over the intake valves. Well, it's only beneficial if you're using high quality fuel. So these valves, because of the exposure to fuel, now it is good to have fuel touching the valves because it helps clean them. But if the fuel that you use is not good, it's low quality, you will still get deposits. So this valve here is showing deposits on it versus that one. And now these valves come from an engine test, which run for about 10,000 miles. And you then pull the valves and look at them. So this is a really cool um, tool and you can actually use your cell phone. So because you guys got all those things in your hands, I'm gonna try my cell phone. And then you can see there, you can enlarge it, you can, you know, play with it a little bit. So you, you see that, why I wanted to show you that close-up is because those deposits actually look and act like a sponge, right? Mm. So what they do is they absorb fuel and it's not going to be tons of fuel. It's going to be just a little bit of fuel even that gets absorbed on, the, on those deposits. It's going to affect the air fuel ratio, right, inside the combustion chamber. So even a very small amount of fuel, and we have actually published this information, it's available in an SAE paper, Society mm -hmm. for Automotive Engineers, of all the studies that we have done looking at the impact of deposits and how they actually matter to the performance of an engine. So if you then can uh, prevent, obviously, deposits from forming, that's gonna help the engine uh, perform better. So if you move the camera over to this side, this is the side that was uh, the valve that comes out of the test with Shelby power. Similar Shelby mileage. Power. Exact same mileage, yes. So these are... Same engine types? It's the same engine, it's a test engine. So it's a standard, this is... This the only is, thing that changes is the fuel. The only thing that changes is the fuel, exactly. The, it, so it's it a direct is, comparison. It is done in a standard engine following a standard uh, ASTM test method. Of course, this example applies more to port injection engines. In a direct injection engine like the one found on my BMW 335i, fuel gets sprayed directly into the combustion chamber, not over the intake valves, meaning the valves will ultimately suffer from carbon buildup, which is why I had to get a walnut blast to clean the valves. Definitely a flaw in direct injection engines. We moved right along to the next demo where we got to see another negative, surprising effect low quality premium fuel can have on your car. It was time to talk about corrosion. To be honest, it's something I never really thought about. And I'm not talking about corrosion within the engine itself, but more so like the fueling system, like the fuel pump, the fuel tank, and the fuel lines. You know, all the parts where fuel sits in all the time. These are things that most people won't know and won't care about unless they're presented with a visual. Here's an example. This is actually the outcome from a real test. And the corrosion test is, is something that a lot of people are not very familiar with. But what you do is you take a spindle, like one of these guys, and you get a little cap, right? Look here at the lab, we call it a beaker. <laughs> and you put gasoline in there, and then you add a contaminant. A lot of the times for the test procedure is uh, you could add some distilled water or water, just plain water. Or you could add other things too if you want to. You could add salt water or, you know. And then what it is is that you leave that spindle in that cup for about um, four hours or so. You let it sit there. And then you pull it out and look at it. And you see how much corrosion has taken place on the surface. And you will say, wow, four hours, that's it? Yes, that's it, four hours. It's very quick. Were, there, were these examples done in four hours? Yes, well, all of these are done with the, uh, with the procedure. And you can see here, so this is, uh, all the premium fuel that was tested. This is a new spindle in the middle, so just so you see the comparison, and this is the outcome of the test with the Shelby Power Nitro Plus. You guys remember that neglected 31-year-old BMW E30 that I purchased recently? Let's just hope that it had Shell V Power Nitro Plus sitting in that gas tank. Where's another thing that high-quality premium fuel such as Shell V Power Nitro Plus can protect against? I know I talked about friction earlier and you guys might think that wear friction is the same thing. Well, 
Not really. Essentially, wear is a result of friction. Engines experience wear over time, but according to Serena, you can greatly reduce or increase the amount of wear your engine experiences based on the fuel you put into your car. Of course, like I explained earlier, this mainly applies to the top portion of the pistons and the cylinder walls where there's metal on metal friction. So you have the oil ring, and then you have the top piston ring, which is the compression ring. So, so the job of that top piston ring is to keep the compression in the engine. But you see it's flexible, right? So it moves. So as the piston is moving up and down at 3,000 revolutions per minute, you've got a lot of flexibility in there, but you don't have a lot of room, okay? Mm -hmm. So what tends to happen is that in order to keep that compression, this top piston ring tends to be oil starved or starved of oil, right? So this is exactly where wear can happen, uh, right up at that top piston ring. But at the same time, depending on obviously how much uh, friction you have in there to start with, you're gonna probably end up with a lot of wear, right? Mm. So if you can minimize friction, you're automatically helping also minimize. So wear is a result wear. of friction. Wear would be a result of friction. Uh, and, and friction is really loss of energy in the engine. So things get hot, right? And you start losing energy that way. Wear is more loss of metal. When wear takes place, you are actually losing something like metal it in there, degrading, right? Yeah. So yeah, that can have eventually with time, you know, this is something that happens over time, over a long time, you can have I mean, it. It is an it's inevitable, but you can minimize. Right. You can minimize, yeah. Through, so, so the top piston ring, the fuel, the additive to the fuel is what yeah, help with the oil starvation of that. Yeah, exactly. Because hopefully oil's not getting to that third no, ring. No, it shouldn't right? get, it shouldn't get in there. But the fuel is adding, you know, that sort of protection around the, the cylinder top layer. and the top layer, yes, where the, where the top piston ring is. And I mean, this display here uh, is actually a, um, a display that comes out of a real engine test that we did. We radar labeled the, uh, the fuel and then we were able to trace uh, all throughout the, the, the engine cycle as the engine was operating how wear was taking place. So you see up here, you know, you can already see the top of the piston, you know, it's already quite a lot of scars there. But also inside the cylinder wall, you see the cylinder liner here has a lot of scratches. And you see this top bit here, every time the piston will go up there and, and you, can, you can actually see evidence of that kind of wear. And this side is, is much, much cleaner. Mm. You don't see anything there. Interesting. Serena also showed me and Matt an experiment where they dropped some fuel on a ball bearing in a metal plate and rubbed the two components together for a little over an hour. Obviously the result of the ball bearings are hard to see since they're so small. So what Shell did was they created bigger versions of the bearings for display purposes. The left metal ball is untouched. The middle one represents the wear experience with V-Power Nitro Plus premium fuel and the one on the right shows the wear experience with the competitor's low quality premium fuel. The last thing we got to experience on tour was probably the one thing I was most excited about, their dual fuel powered Ford Raptor. Well, initially I was very excited because I thought I'd be able to drive the damn thing and then I found out that I couldn't. But either way, it was still fun to see how this truck operates using two different fuels simultaneously. Unlike the valves that we got to see inside that were tested separately on two different vehicles, this test happens at the same time with the same real time conditions. Fuel V-Power Nitro Plus on three cylinders and a competitor's fuel on the other three cylinders. The intake manifold was removed in order to insert a camera so we can take a look within the engine. The valves located on the left side where the competitor's fuel was used had significantly more buildup than the V-Power side. It's kind of hard to show you as I was trying to record an already hard to see screen. But trust me, the results were there, bright as day. Now, like I said earlier, this is like 4,000 miles, okay? It's mm -hmm. not a lot of miles. At all. And it already has that much build. It already had that build up. So it already happened at that. Okay, there it is. See how clean it is? It's you can actually see the grain in the metal, you know, yeah. and it's shining there. It's shining because of the camera has a light at the end. So that's kind of, you know, again, 4,000 miles, you say, wow. Uh, a low quality premium fuel already was generating deposits on the valves and That's obviously great. the V power side is clean. This experience was definitely an eye opener for me and maybe it'll be for you. Gone are the days where I just stop at any gas station to fuel up. I definitely try to be more careful now. Not all premium fuel is created equal. Well, the base level is, but the additives used in the fuel plays a huge role in your engine's health, especially over time. Next time you decide to stop at any particular gas station because it's cheaper from the rest, give it a longer thought. Why is it cheaper?
Huge thanks to Shell for flying me over to Houston to learn more about their premium fuel and a huge thanks to all of you guys that watch my videos. If it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't have the opportunities such as this one. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.